CataractCoach.com. This is the best of Cataract Coach with our expert panelists, Dr. Rosa Bragamili and Dr. Deepinder Dhaliwal. All right, here's case one. Da da da. We missed the audio, but cataractcoach.com. <laughs> now watch this case right here. Now, this is an important one. This is, we're going to move fast here. We had a former UCLA resident doing this in residency. So what do you notice here going on in this case? Yeah. Right, right, right. So, okay, what do you want to do? There's a lot of Zion and loss. What's your next step? Are you going to put in viscoelastic? Inject tripen blue dye. Please fix the slide here. There you go. Do you want to inject tramcinolone? Something else? Cry and regret that you agreed to do the case. What do you want to do in this case? Cry and regret that? <laughs> <laughs> now you're thinking like, inject viscoelastic. Yeah. But, okay, what do you panel? What do you guys want to do? Inject viscoelastic. I, it doesn't look like there's any vitreous. If you're really concerned about vitreous loss, you could inject tramcinolone. How do you know see. there's no vitreous? Well, then you should inject tramcinolone. So and put tramcinolone first. Right. That what would you do, Rosa? Idea. Yeah, I'd probably put a bit of tramcinolone in and see what was going on, and then I would inject viscoelastic over that area for sure. Yeah, I like the tramcinolone idea a lot because the tramcinolone, you can't, I can't tell if there's vitreous. Maybe you're better than me, but I can't tell. So I think putting a little tramcinolone is going to make it a lot easier to see. And if you put viscoelastic, it's hard to just restain after with the tramcinolone. So here's what we did. So, yep, tramcinolone. Tramcinolone was injected here. Can we get this to show the videos, please? Get the slide off. Ooh, there was a lot of vitreous. Yeah, so Ooh, there's a, there's a lot thing. more vitreous than you imagine. And then the other part, too, is it seems like the vitreous was helping to stabilize the lens. <laughs> no, really? Oh, right? Wow. So now you're taking out the vitreous, now the lens is getting more destabilized. <laughs> now it's like more stressful. There's the viscoelastic, finally. There's still some vitreous around. Now, this is the important thing. How do you guys inject the tripan? So I do it under viscoelastic and I paint it like you do because if you inject it under air, it will go under all that zonular dialysis and you will have no red reflux for your That case. is exactly. such an important point here. Don't ask how I know. But if you just inject the... It's, it's the, probably because I told them before. If you inject the, yeah, if you just do the tripan, you're right. It goes in the vitreous cavity and then you will not have a red reflux throughout the case. So now here, what, any pearls are getting this rexus done? So it's a little tough to get this rexus. When I start to do the rexus here and grab onto it, or the resin is doing it here, it ends up the whole nucleus is kind of moving. What do you have for a pearl here? It's kind of tough to complete this. So you have to wrinkling. stabilize the bag. So would you put a hook in now? A you could. Hook? You could. So I actually would have started my rexus the other way, oh. um, and then started my capsule hooks because its onular instability is on the. Um, the inferior side, and I would have put capsular hooks in there. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So how are you gonna stabilize the bag now? More viscoelastic, iris hooks, capsular hooks, CTR, capsular segment. What do you want to do now? Capsule hooks. So capsule hooks. How are those different than iris hooks? They're longer, okay. and they have more kind of surface area to help stabilize the, the fornix. The yeah, they can get all the way back into yeah. the equator, I think, yeah. which is really helpful. They're a little there. sturdier. I mean, if you don't have them, I would put in iris hooks to hold the capsule, but you have to be very careful with iris hooks that you don't grab your capsule edge and run it. How, how many hooks do you think you'll need in this case? And remember, they are seeing this case for the first time. They've never seen this case. So t I, two, two at least. At least two. At least two. Yeah. Might be more. You might be surprised. Might be ten. <laughs> I saw a neat pearl from one of Neto's associates where he puts in the hooks at the beginning, just pre-places them, and leaves them just the yeah. tip of the para, making like, making like these. Here's something a little different now. Instead of hooks, here's a CTS. Yeah. Yeah. Capturing your segment going in. And now, now you can use an iris hook, actually, to hold that eyelet. So that can work too, but would you clean up more of that vitreous? To me, there still looks like there's vitreous stuck in the para. Yeah. So there's the iris. You just pull the vitreous out of the way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, the vitreous is not attached posteriorly. So, so then it's you okay. You can clean it up later. So tighten that up, and now just with the capture tension segment, so you don't have a hook, you can use the CTS, and you're going to end up using the CTS anyway. So obviously, nucleus removal is easy, especially if you use the special three handed technique you saw there. <laughs> Well, now what's going on back there? Why does it still look whitish? What's going on? Any guesses? That's called way too much triamcinolone at the beginning of the case. And so you put so much triamcinolone, you didn't dilute it enough, so now you got triamcinolone in the anterior hyaloid space, and now the views, the red reflux is kind of crummy. So that's called too much triamcinolone. I dilute the triamcinolone about uh, um, 10 milligrams per cc. 
What do you guys want to do for the Iowa World Choice here? You want to put the lens in the bag, single piece, three piece? What is your goal here? I mean, you've got an intact bag, so you, and you put in a CTR and a capsule tested segment, so I would put a single piece in the bag. These guys like a three piece. If you were going to put a three piece, how would you, would you put it all in the bag? You'd put it haptics in the sulcus, optic capture. <laughs> Well, put, put the haptics in the sulcus after capture if you're going to put a three piece. And then do you have to orient the haptics in any particular way then? Because you got a big gap of zone loss 90 degrees away then? Yep. Yeah. That, that works really well. So that's, what about just three piece in the bag alone? It's kind of no different than a single piece in the bag, right? You could do that, yeah. but I would be just very careful on how you insert it. Yeah. Like you might even want to load it into the anterior segment and then gently put with a second instrument your. Um, Haptics in the back. And we can tell there's a resident in the room it's for E. I've always wanted to try Yamane. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks like just single piece in the bag looks okay. And now how are we gonna fixate that eyelet now? How would you fixate the eyelet to the sclera on the segment? Cortex? Thing? Cortex, yeah, so pe that's people have, in the past used to use tenno polypropylene, but we found that breaks, right? Yes. So here comes the Gore-Tex. So the Gore-Tex is that CV8 needle. It's meant for cardiovascular surgery, hence the name CV8 on the needle. So it's apparently 8.0, but any pearl for working with this? Because I find Gore-Tex to be so slippery and snotty and slick. Any yeah. pearls for this? Yeah, well, I heard it in the front. I would have probably straightened that needle out a little bit. You oh, yeah, out, for sure. That's a good idea. Way. I would, yeah, straighten the needle out ahead of time so it's easier to pass. Because now it's curved, you see. Yeah. It's a lot tougher to pass. So this is using, I like the scleral groove there, and now poking in here and guiding with the, the hypodermic needle, guiding the 8O CV8 out of the eye. But yeah, this is really slick and slippery, so you have to make sure you're not too square, and you have to actually make sure it's properly cinched down here. And I think the gore is certainly gonna last the patient's lifetime. Obviously, this is an off-label use. But as we get this in here, pull that through, and you can get that pull through and it's gonna tighten it up nicely. Now, any pearls, how tight do you wanna pull this thing? I mean, no. I lift weights for a reason, just yank it? No, not too tight. It should just be like the zonule, kind of hanging out there. So don't pull it too tight. You want the, to center up the lens. Yep, so it looks make, reasonable. And, and then make sure you bury the knot. Ah, uh, key point here, yes. The, you don't want the knot sitting there under the conjunctiva. It's gonna to be too much of an erosion point. So you can rotate that, get the knot buried within the eye. And then I like that this little the, the scleral, half scleral depth groove was made because now you can just bury or even have the band of Gore-Tex fall in that groove. And here's the end. I also like the suturing of the tenor nylon of the main incision. Probably a good idea in a case like this. So interesting case.